Um, we got that, that's suddenly a deep reference. There's Profe, know. dude. When's we, the big opening? Uh, that's a good question. When is the big opening? Sometime in October or Distober. I think there'll probably mm. be a small opening <laughs> in October <laughs> and a large opening <laughs> in <laughs> December or January. I'm sorry, there's something <laughs> about small opening and large <laughs> opening that just made me laugh. <laughs> and that's not prof talks. <laughs> 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 uh, it's like Mike has a large opening, you know? <laughs> no. Gaping. You have a whoa. No, uh, see, no, you they're... say whoa just because there's one word that you whoa, use gaping dude. before, but you can use a gaping for many things. Sure. But you don't. But then re- referencing large gym. opening. Yeah, yeah. A large yeah, we have a the gaping, gaping opening coming soon with the gym. That Would you say that? No. We have a gaping. No. Ceremonious. <laughs> That's not. This is getting worse. Premiere. Is what I would say. Um, we don't know. C- COVID is still running rampant in California. Things are closed. There's outdoor gym capabilities, but we want to follow through and we're going to open our gym inside when we get the equipment and then we'll adjust plan when that comes. So we're still probably four, six, eight weeks out from some of our equipment. We're picking some more up tomorrow and then, uh, and then we'll see what had happened was so um but yeah small opening probably soft opening is what the professionals call it maybe october september clothing dropping september though if you want to get involved get involved third street barbell on instagram 3sb.co uh exclusive you'll get the first twitch probably podcast probably and um email list so 3sb.co we'll get the exclusive first taste um, probably leaks of the pictures uh, of the of the, uh, uh, the the apparel and probably first touch on it, um, and then hopefully a big old party opening whenever things are uh, fixed. Who's paying for your flight? Get out of here, dude! I would love to point out the fact that Profit is not a subscriber on Twitch. Mm. Yikes! Yeah, I see that as well. Fake homie. This can all be pre rambled and edited, but. But it probably won't be because I'm, I have to do this and then go work. So, you know. Game on. <laughs> we'll get to some real questions for the real people. We're live on Twitch, by the way. If you guys ever want to hang out, we normally rec- record Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesdays. Available on every platform possible every Wednesday. Turn on notifications. Tell your friends. Do us a, just, do, just do me a big one. Share this thing on Twitter. Share it on Instagram. We'll give you a shout out, a little retweet, a little, uh, a little reposty post. Um, how do you find and surround yourself with people with similar goals and similar ambitions? That's a really good question. I I think think Jim's probably got the most experience as he's been on the planet the longest. Well, I think that the answer to that is that it's hard and that, um, it is very difficult to discern people's true motives that are all the time. Yeah. And sometimes people will tell you things that they think that you want to hear about what their what their their goals and thoughts and and emotions are in order to exploit your whatever you can do for them yeah and it can take you oh i don't know like a dozen years to figure that out um i am caref- more careful now in the last i would say even a lifetime two and a half years than i than i have ever been before yeah, I think it. I think it. Uh, it depends on the depth of what you're looking at, right? Uh, we can speak about this on many levels, uh, as deep as like a marriage or a business partnership, which is probably as intensive as you can get. Um, and you can scale that all the way up to a drinking buddy or a mm-hmm. training partner. Mm-hmm. In which case, I think the qualifications, resume, um, aren't as in depth or as important, really, right? If you yeah. just want someone that um, wants to bench with you on Tuesdays. Does it really matter if you guys follow the same religion, have the same moral standards? You know, that's up for you to choose. You can choose someone <laughs> like that, but probably not. You just want someone that is want to get as strong as you. Yeah, not going to misload your weight, not going to give you a shitty hand off. Right, not very... Any, it's, yeah. That's pretty Small. basic. It's pretty basic. I will say that the two people who, sp- who put the most effort into trying to be friends with me are people that I'm not friends with anymore because I figured out that they were trying to... They wanted something from me. 
Yes. And and got it for a long time. That's you know? that's where I was going to go. It's like life is a tryout. And like people get divorced in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s yeah. after being married for 40 years because you it's sound like depressing as it sounds you're like you can't really fully know someone and people change. You don't know their intentions. Like Jim was kind of talking about like a chameleon or do they want something from you or are they leading you on? And this could be again business-wise or romantically um or friendship-wise. Um so I think the easy one is if if you want to get stronger at bench or something simple as that, or, yeah. or you want a drinking buddy, go to the type of bar or the type of gym or the type of environment that you enjoy, mm. and likely that will attract the people. And that's the whole point of building our gym around the basis of good companies. We'll build mm. the facility and the energy and the vibe of the people we want to train with and attract, and then it's going to be there. And then those people will also attract their friends that are similar, and we'll get a bunch of people that want to smash weights, get healthier, and have fun. Uh, when you're talking about like a business partner or something, I do think there is a romantic, right? That's what like dating is kind of, or, or, or being friends is, and that's going back to the topic of like starting a business with a friend mm -hmm. or starting business with a family is a bad idea. I think starting with a business just because someone's a friend is a bad idea or starting a business just because someone's family is a bad idea. But I would easily go into business with my mother. Like I trust her. She works mm -hmm. hard. She's very smart. She's very resourceful, right? It depends on the family member. Yeah. So you have to take every human as a human. Um, and same with business, you, you, you know, you build up your own criteria. If you, you know, some people, it might just be, they're really good at a job. I want to delegate or yeah. I'm trash at, and then maybe it fits that way. But for me, it's, it's who do I want to spend time around who has gifts or, or resources that I'm not good at, mm -hmm. who has a similar vision as me, similar work ethic with me, uh, similar loyalty and selflessness than me. Um, and those are kind of mine. Me and Connor uh, filmed a YouTube video and kind of went over the same topic, uh, why it kind of chose you bums to work with um, and how it works in my head. Um, but but I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know how you like just find it other than that. I think that you're testing the waters with anybody that you meet and you sort of have to feel them out. And a lot of people, a lot of people are not that forthcoming when you first meet them. Sure. And, and, you figure you decide pretty early on whether or not it's worth it to to actually delve in and find out more about them. Other people want to tell you a lot of stuff up front. Yeah, and that isn't necessarily the best scenario. Yeah, maybe sometimes I'd rather take that though. You Honestly, think? Yeah, yeah. You don't sure. think it's a red flag? Uh, it depends. It depends on the person. It depends how close you want to be with that person. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel if like they if come out and say something right away, and you're like, oh shit. Okay, this person clearly doesn't have a filter, or they just don't give a shit at that point. Then you obviously got to fill them out, and it depends always what they're talking about. But yeah, I'd rather that than them just go along with everything you say. Oh uh, like, yeah, oh sure, sure, yeah, yeah. like yeah. I don't want a yes man, but if someone's coming to me on like first beer or first hangout, or I meet one of Jim's friends for the first time or something, and he's just ripping his life story or like it his car on, yeah, or yeah. his financials or his it depends on the extent. skill set. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro. There's a difference between being unfiltered and just exploding basically and just like oh i'm just gonna tell this person my entire life yeah that's uh, something that person needs to work on but i mean there's a di the, yeah i don't know I'm I, a at walking this point filter. i'd rather have that i'd rather have someone just come at me with everything and i'll be like okay i know what they are i don't have to spend years with this person to realize they're a piece of shit or if they're a really good person uh now and in, in these days i try to evaluate people like based on a number of things that are in my head but one of them is like okay am i dealing with somebody who doesn't have much of a filter Am I dealing with somebody who is potentially a narcissist and they're really just after what I can, can they want to impress me for whatever mm -hmm. reason, because I just like, that's a, a chalk mark for them or whatever. Um, will they be interesting on, in, in the long haul to me yeah. because we're actually deeply interested in the same things or does a superficial thing? Like you go through this, this list sure. of criteria. I got a bunch more probably. Yeah. 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 And you figure out a position for that person in your life. And if you, you know, if you actually want to have them in your life and yeah. what, what they're, extent. yeah, what, what function do they perform in your life? And then, uh, and there are people that just don't make the cut, obviously. Yeah. And this is not like an ego thing. This is just like a, it's like how you, how happy are you with your life? Right. And, and some of that is reflected in who your friends are yeah. and, and your, the time that you enjoy with them. Um, and, uh, you can, if you have a pretty clear view of people, you can find a place for them. Just don't expect that it's going to be more than it, than it can be. Right. You just like assess them correctly enough 
And sometimes people disappoint you, and you have to sort of back yeah. off, you know. And you go. I think oh. always people disappoint you, and that's well, part of the, not that's, always, not always to sound negative. Everybody's but human, so that's yeah, yeah. I think that's the issue, and that's a hard conclusion. It took me thirty years to get around. Uh, <laughs> it's just like like not expectation, because I think yeah. I hold myself to such an expectation of being a good human, being a good friend, being a hard mm-hmm. worker, being loyal, and then I hold others to those expectations. Yeah. Um, and so then they always get shattered at any level. Uh, yeah. And so how do you manage that is a whole nother topic that I don't have answers to. That's the secret of life. Um, but I think you're right. It's like managing those expectations by putting them in categories. Hey, this guy is going to take a bullet for me. Hey, this mm-hmm. guy I'm grabbing a beer with mm-hmm. once a month. Hey, this guy I'll text him mm-hmm. when I'm in town maybe. <laughs> mm-hmm. I um, People actually have a therapist appointment tomorrow and, and, and one of his, his points was like just be really careful when you're going to, into business with friends. Yeah. And we're all friends. Yeah. We don't do everything together. Yeah, yeah. I and do think it's... You guys do, but you all live in the same house, too. Man, oh, if I could get away. <laughs> I, uh... Th- yeah, no, he's lying. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's always like, hey, man, he's always wondering why he's not invited to things. Yeah, that's why Connor, I put a bolt Connor's, lock on my bedroom door. <laughs> we just leave him out of things, and he's like, thanks for the Mikey, invite. Mikey, Mikey, could you come out and play? <laughs> Mikey! He's, he's sure singing a different tune today, Connor. Oh, very different. Very different <laughs> tune today. <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> fuck, I had a point. <laughs> uh, anyway, but, but I, I sort of still did too. But I mean, like, we care for each other. Yeah, we yeah. have respect for each oh. other. All that kind of stuff. But it doesn't mean that we have to do everything together. And I think that when people when people try to f- force that situation, yeah. you know, around on business partners that are, you know, yeah. friends or acquaintances or whatever, and they, they try to include everything, that gets that gets mm-hmm. uh, to be too much. It there's a lot to of much. there's a lot of stuff with the business partner stuff. One comment, and I don't want to bash your therapist because everyone says this, but they're like, "Yeah, don't do business with friends." Like, no, he didn't say that. I know, I know. Okay, okay whatever. But just people do, right? Yeah. That's I've heard that a he million said, times. Just be careful, sure. But everyone says it. Like, uh, have you ever done business with friends? Like, why are you telling me this if you never? You have you even opened a business? Yeah, you know what I mean. Right, and I'm right. not the you have to do it to coach it guy, but why would you just say that just because you you saw it on some book somewhere yeah. and, and and people just said that for the last 30 years like what do you know about doing business and you want me to do business with my enemy like yeah. what's my other option yeah. somebody that i don't want to be around and now i have to be in meetings all day around uh and then something to your point too is we don't do everything together but we have spent a lot of hours together <laughs> and lucky uh for these two uh separately but you and i too um like marriage and i'm no marriage counselor never been married <laughs> but uh if you go through different experiences you know how you can handle different people in different times, meaning you and I uh, kind of did business together, basically the yeah. podcast, we, yeah. but, but we traveled a bunch together. Yeah. We had a lot of dinners together. We had stressful work situations, yeah. fun work situations, beer situations. You, we've done that. Me and Connor have shared a billion Airbnbs. Me, Connor and Kyle took a big trip together where we were isolated yeah. well, until you kind of do that stuff and you see how people react. Like I, I like one little is stupid, but like I got a Airbnb for all, for all you bums actually on Twitch. Uh, I got an Airbnb for all the mods who moderate my channel. Um, and a couple of them just ditched. A couple of them didn't even answer me profit. <laughs> and then we, uh, so I got the Airbnb. I was like, all right, let's go to, what uh, was it? It was like a comic con type thing, whatever. It was an excuse Boston, to go to Boston. Right? Yeah. 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 And and the Airbnb was smaller than I thought. It said it's uh, like always they lie. It's right, like oh right. beds like six people or whatever, uh, like three dudes per bed if that math works out. <laughs> but but right away Connor Carl like yeah we'll share a bed whatever uh-huh. like that's simple thing, right? But like all right they're they're down for the cause. They're not gonna bitch at me like oh where's my hotel and where's well I mm. need my own bed and well you know I need to sleep on the west side because the sun rises and you know yeah, little yeah. shit like that. But little things like that add yeah. up because then when we're getting splinters in our hand and we're painting for ten hours straight. That person's less likely to bitch, also, you know. Right? No, that's true. Yeah, and um, uh, back back to my therapist point. He's just uh, particularly for me because I've I've not been good at it. His boundaries. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm bad too. It's like the, you develop like this is this is this far and no further. And like if you can go into a bitch, business situation kind of knowing what the boundaries are, yeah, then you're better off, regardless of whether it's a friend or not. For sure. For it's sure. just it can be more challenging with a, with, a, with a friend, and I will f- freely admit that there have been times when I was managing people that I played the friend card hard because I wasn't very empowered. It wasn't about me; it was about the situation. Yeah. So, like, trying to smooth things out with people sometimes, it's like, yeah, you know, like, 
hey, we're all working toward a better day. And like, I'm, I'm, you know, I got your back and whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. It's hard. And a lot of it's bullshit, but I mean, it's not that you don't mean it. It's right. just that it, you're um, portraying yourself as having more control than you, than you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a, a whole lot of, of management situations are like that. And they're really become harder and they have their goods and bads, pros and cons to all of these. But when you're working in like a smaller team or starting your own business or you're working for a small business, the benefits should be that you can have those candid conversations and you don't have this weird power dynamic, at least in my opinion, how we run my companies, mm-hmm. where you go corporate and you're not friends with your boss. You're not allowed to be. Yeah. He's your boss. There's this power dynamic. Mm-hmm. You got to set up appointment to walk into his office. And there's all these like standards set up that may make him laying the law down easier for both parties, mm-hmm. right? Because he knows his role. His role is to enforce these laws and make sure your productivity is at a certain level and you're hitting these quotas. And your role is to do your job and follow that. But then the communication is so non-organic. It's the, there is no friendship. There is none of these things. So then when you mo- move into it like a smaller private style business how you work around those dynamics it is up to you some people do set that law and they micromanage or they they they, they're 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 more cut and dry they have these rule books etc etc protocols or what i like to do is kind of play more of a friend card like and then just choose who works with me you know like look i'm not going to text you every morning getting your shit done get the shit done it's that simple you know, yeah. I don't want to text you every day. I don't want to look over your shoulder. I don't want to make you have office hours because mm-hmm. I don't want office hours, but I'm going to get my work done and I'm going to go beyond and you get your work done and you go beyond. Mm-hmm. And that's just kind of the systems I set up. And if you don't fit that system, you're probably just not going to work with us no more. I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it comes down to like, um, I mean, what helps a lot is if they played some sort of team competitive sport in the past too. I think that's huge because... I mean, I've been around the people that have, like, never played sports. I don't care if you play sports or whatever. But I think doing something that involves a group of people for combined effort to accomplish something, that plays a large role in anything. Like, going back to, like, us going to Boston, like, like sharing a like sharing a bed or whatever, that's, e- that's not even, like, a thought. Like, in my mm-hmm. head, I'm like, yeah, we've gone bus trips. Some people, the six people in one room kind of yeah. thing. You're just like, it's not even a thought. You're on just like, oh, you just organized team trip, I slept on the ground at a away tournament. Yeah, yeah. Because the yeah. school couldn't afford a room. So it was three dudes per hotel room. Uh-huh. And and yeah. I had the two starting guards on my team, and I was a backup guard. So I was like, all right, man, I'll sleep on the ground. <laughs> I get er- it. You guys yeah. got to sleep a little better. Yeah. The early ST days, we used to travel for, for meets and stuff, and we put like five or six yeah, you ain't got in the money. hotel room. It's yeah. like, yeah. I, it's not like couldn't have come up with the money. It's just how it works. Yeah, you yeah. Know? We're just like, oh, we'll just throw it in. Not because some people couldn't, you know? Yeah. And it would be it's like, oh, I'm going to get my own room and everybody else can sleep wherever. It's like, no, you don't do yeah, that. That's, that's, it, 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 that's, yeah, it, it kills the esprit de corps, you know? Yeah, yeah. Bart has a similar thing that what Kyle was talking about. And Bart didn't even play team sports growing up, but he's learned it and he really is a good team player. But he, like, uh, just, like, writes people off afterwards. like, yeah, that guy didn't play basketball. <laughs> and I think basketball, and I'm obviously biased, but I do think basketball is the best example because it requires a higher level of concentration and and uh, and, co- and cooperation and so and be even beyond that each position is capable of doing anything yeah no other sport has that where uh, it doesn't matter the position you t- technically play yeah. you do everything you can dribble you can pass you can score you play defense you do it all and sometimes you are in those positions and you're not allowed to do those yeah. Like we had, there's people on my team like, yeah, Kyle, you're not shooting today, bro. Yeah. Like I know you're, I know that's, uh, you know, I know to physically you can and your position can, but you suck at shooting and yeah. like needs the shots today. Yeah, and that yeah. person's like, all right, I'm going to do this then. Like yeah, yeah. And, and my high school coach had a, had a, a saying, just do your job. Yeah. And obviously the saying's pretty self-explanatory, but if, if you're not, if I'm not the organized money guy, I'm yeah. not going to be talking to Jim about budgets. Yeah. I <laughs> Not my gig. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to tell him, like, yeah, Jim, we could really afford this. Like, you tell me, bro, that's not my spot. My job is this, and I'm going to do this. Back to team sports for just a second, though. Like, I didn't play team sports, honestly, uh, outside of, you know, like, recess and PE and shit. Um, <clears throat> uh, but when I was when I was getting my bachelor's, mm-hmm. I was getting a business degree, and there's a lot of group project shit. Oh yeah, and what I found was that undergrad people are terrible at group group projects. They're just they're yeah. awful, and there's usually at least one, if not two, people who never do shit. Yeah, yeah. And where oh, everybody else yeah, does memes does all it, the work, and so yeah. like it, it was kind of usually me. But when I went to grad school, it was an entirely different. Experience Interesting, because when you know there's going to be a group project, 
And it's usually not the first day of class. It's usually, you know, a couple weeks in. So you've heard what the kinds of questions that people ask. Yeah, yeah. You've heard, often you've heard introductions, so you have some idea of what they do. And so in your head, you're always kind of thinking about, okay, like every every business case that you get in, 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 in you know, business school, there are functional areas. Like, okay, so who's here for accounting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the numbers guy? Who does who does marketing? Who does, you know who does who, who's good at figuring out operations? Whatever, whatever. And you start assembling your potential team in your head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, I had one class in particular. I can't remember which one it was, but it was just like clockwork. Everybody was really good and did their stuff, and they were on time. Yeah. And like, even had a even built in a process where we knew we were going to be done with the first draft by this date, and we're going to be done by the second draft by this date, and we're going to turn in this, we're going to turn in early if we could. We talked to the professor and say, hey, can we turn it in early and yeah, get yeah. your reviews? Like, yeah, just these people were totally on top of it, and I would have done I would have done any kind of business with those folks. Yeah, yeah. But literally walking into the classroom, you think, I know there's going to be a group project or a series of group, group projects. What's my group look like? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that, kind of, that kind of teamwork... Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be in sports. No, sure. I think Kyle's point is good because say you play sports, there's still always one or two bitches. Like just because you played sports mm-hmm. doesn't mean you did it, but I think no. there's a higher percent chance that like you... If you were in the military, it doesn't necessarily mean anything about you at all. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, 100%. Like th- maybe there's a higher chance you learn these skills, communication, teamwork, yeah. chasing down a, a, a common enemy, a common mm-hmm. goal, having ha- being a part of something bigger than yourself. I think the percentage starts to go up. And then like Jim, like didn't play a ton of team sports. I think the percentage goes down, but it's not zero. Yeah. Like there's still just people out there that are team players that are loyal, that are willing to take a... In basketball, like the, the big thing is like take a charge or die for a loose ball. Mm-hmm. That fucking hurts your body, right? Uh, I don't know what the mm-hmm. baseball term would be. Uh, the the catcher would take a fucking hit or whatever. Yeah. Like will, will, willing to put your body through something for the greater good of the team, even mm-hmm. though it doesn't doesn't look good on stats. It doesn't get you on the all star team. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not on a highlight reel. There's no charges in NBA on a highlight reel. Mm-hmm. But you're willing to take that in the chest. There's people like that way outside of sports. But then the chances that you have that personality, and that you know those skills, then goes down. I think you know. Yeah. But n- and all of it's capable. I think so. I think we sucked the marrow out of that one. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. Um, has starting a business during the pandemic had any new challenges? Oh, absolutely! Not being able to know if you're going to be open—that's you know we're 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 sitting here. Okay, so here's the thing. This is this is a little bit political, but not entirely. Our county was given millions of dollars out of the f- the first relief package. Yeah, that were supposed to go to health and other things most of it went to the county sheriff's department the health department the county health department has been begging for crumbs to fall off the table so they have been only able to test three or four hundred people a day by themselves yeah they are working with volunteers they're doing all this crazy shit that, that like they're like it's a poor country that we're living in and that's not the case at all so our numbers are not great they're not they were pretty good at the beginning, yeah, but they are not great right now. They're, I think, gonna improve. Yesterday was terrible, but that was a big catch-up day. Yeah, but part of the reason that businesses are not the the kind the kind that we're trying to open are not open is because that money was misallocated. Yeah, so that screwed all of us small business owners who rely on public like little like in-person public interaction. Right. Yeah, and some kind of service. It is entirely out of our hands. Yeah. I think a lot of like things we can go protest about it, but that isn't actually like yeah. fix the problem. There's yeah. a lot of uh issues because uh federally, statewide, and then city, the issues in particular, like the one you talk about, are so varied. Yeah. Um where cause you hear on the news and Twitter like yeah, tests are everywhere and we're getting all these tests back. But by experience, my friend was exposed to COVID and uh she tried to go get a test and mm-hmm. she couldn't get one for 10 days. Yeah. Here in Sacramento. You know what I mean? Where you hear everywhere else, like people are getting it left and right. No, nah, they're handing out tests and they're free and they're left. So it's a very state by state um, situation. I think dep- like the actual challenge for the gym, it, I think Jim, you know, he went into the reason why, but I think the simple answer is probably that's the only thing I've found that's the new challenge is just never knowing 
the exact date that we're even allowed to open, whether we could or not. There's ripple effects. Um, obviously, exercise industry, the equipment has been bought up by home gyms, yep. and, and those industries have been impacted by overseas and uh, different manufacturing issues within themselves because all their workers can't go to work. So different companies' production level has gone down, which means our expected delivery date of what we need is always delayed. So mm. that's kind of a ripple effect of what's going on. We, Who knows if we'd have equipment by now if there's no COVID, but we haven't had it, and it'll probably be a couple more weeks. So that's a delay. And in our case right now, it's fine because we can't open. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, I think with the apparel, with the business stuff, like everything's just kind of locked up. I think everyone's emails are a little bit slow to answer. Everyone's a little slow to, you know, we've called the bank three weeks ago and they haven't called us back. Like little things like that. Um, probably feel a little bit slower than they might be if the world was full ticking economy and everyone's fucking crushing it. Um, but otherwise, I think every business and every project you start just has new challenges. So in that yeah. case, have we had challenges? Yes. Will we have more? Yes, a bunch. Um, but not necessarily directly pandemic. Well, I would say that there's the issue of how do you how do you keep your space clean so that your members are safe? Um, <clears throat> are you going to have to open outside? We have the ability to do that. Yeah. It's going to be, it'd be funky as hell. Yeah. Um, for sure. You get a real nice sunburn. Yeah. Or we're going to have to figure out some kind of covering for the, for the parking lot. We, we do have a covered area, but we can't put 25 people there at a given time. Yeah. Whereas we could put that many people in the parking lot if it were covered somehow, yeah. or people were cool with working out in the, whatever. Um, what else, uh, has been a challenge? I'll um, say the overall vibe is just weird out too. Yeah. 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 yeah it's just agree. sucked. Like, yeah. It doesn't it, feel it just, good. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't like, but even like riding our bikes, it, I don't know. It feels, it feels, uh, cause people want it to be open so bad. You see all like the, the little partitions outside for bars and stuff like that. It doesn't feel authentic at all. And people, I mean, it, that's just, I, I don't know. We're just riding our bikes. Just feel, it doesn't feel like downtown sack right now. It kind of feels, no. I feel like we're down on our luck right now a little bit. Yeah. All yeah. around, obviously in the nation, but I don't like to go shopping. I used to like grocery yeah. stores. I like, used to like buying mm -hmm. food because I yeah, love food. I don't want to go to Home I've, Depot. I've cut down the number of places that I go. I just sure. don't want yeah. to. Yeah. I don't like it feels not fun. Yeah. You don't feel like you're going there to like, oh, man, we're just going to grab some food. Like, we're just going to go chill. Yeah. No, it's like, okay, do I have like, it, it's just, I don't know. It feels like a chore. It feels like you're going to work just to go get groceries a little bit kind of thing. Part, like of, that. Sa part of that, that part of Sacramento downtown, midtown, East Sac. Yeah. Is people going out and doing things. A lot of people and are trying. And it's just, a, it's. It's not at all what it was. You no. know? And it, I mean, Sacramento is one of those places, I've said this for a while, if you have an event, people will show up. Yeah. If they know about it, for they'll sure. show up because yeah. people are looking for something to do, something interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Whether or not it is exactly, you know, the thing that, they, that they're that they desperate to do or want to do, they'll they'll yeah. show up. Yeah, I think they're and, hungry. And uh, that's always been the case. Uh, a thing that... that uh, gives me hope is that once we get on the other side of this, people are really going to show up. I think so too. I think so yeah. too. And we do have a strong city and I think we, uh, a negative and a positive is that we do have a lot of small business owners and that's a negative because it's a struggle for them to survive for reasons yeah. Jim talked about. And because the city's so new, we were talking about it off, off podcast that like Jim's been here 30 ish years. I've been here 20. Oh shit. I guess I've been here more 27 years, um, in Sacramento and, uh, I don't know past like the 70s, but like 80s, 90s, early 2000s, even up until like 2013, 14, 15, no one came downtown. There was no reason to come downtown. Uh, you worked for the Capitol or you worked for the state of California mm -hmm. and you'd go downtown or maybe you liked one random restaurant that was kind of there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no reason. And over the last five years, there's been an absolute evolution, revolution of everything from culture to food. And so we have brand new mom and pop shops, which is the negative. They don't have the money and the finances mm -hmm. and the resources to maintain this pace of business right now um, although a lot of them are trying to get creative like Kyle said with the per partitions and trying to do things um, but I think that's a positive too because mm -hmm. the type of person that go through a headache of opening a brick and mortar business in California is a different breed of human talking about surrounding yeah. yourself with like-minded people so I think the fact that we have so many investor businessmen mom and pop style entrepreneurs in Sacramento in the long run, I think those people will find a way. I mean, I, I you know, it's sad. Some people will fail. It's going to happen, mm -hmm. uh, but that's going to happen anywhere. But I do think a lot of people will find the resources to push through because they are 
uh, of that mentality of, of human, um, which I is why partly why I like Sacramento. Um, yeah, we I mean, have a lot of that. <clears throat> we're trying to figure out like how do we how do we open? Uh, if we can't open as a gym, what else can we be? Yeah, mm-hmm. we have a facility. Get um, a couple kegerators. Yeah, there. I mean, th- th- there are a lot of possibilities that we might be exploring if we can't if we can't pull it together. Yeah, my commu- sense is community that community nights are going to be a thing. We, yeah, we might just have to. Com- turn it to a community every weekend instead of every six months. I, I just, I don't see um, whole sectors of the economy being allowed to fail because of, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because of this. It's, I mean, it's possible, but I just don't see it. And I, the other thing is that like, there is not a lot of evidence. In fact, I haven't seen any of community spread of COVID in gyms. Yeah. And I, I, it, the, the resources are too much, but I would love it if they could send out like a fire marshal or, or whoever, some health person, uh, and see your facility one by one and say like, oh yeah, they have enough airflow and enough stuff. Yeah. Because our facility, when you open all our gates, you're outside. There's yeah. more open wall than there is closed wall. Yeah. You yeah. know, like you feel outside when you open our gates and we have rafters rather than if you go into like a massage parlor, even mm-hmm. though it's one on one person, I'm just the first thing that came to mind in your or, or a cubicle mm-hmm. and everyone's just in a cubicle next to each other, breathing on each other. Mm-hmm. Like that's much different or 24 hour fitness where there's sorry, 24 don't mean to bash you. Don't sue me for anything uh, where you have a, a hundred treadmills in a row and then a hundred people next to each other, three feet away. Um, the spacing, like just the, how our building shaped is so different. Yeah, we're also getting the opportunity to decide how much equipment we're putting in the building. For sure. Uh, based on on being able to distance inside the building. Yeah. As opposed to um, places that are already full of equipment right. and trying to figure out how to, oh, how do we block off things so people don't use them so they're not next to each other. A and gym model like that is is optimizing square feet. How much equipment can they put into square feet? That's yeah. what commercial gyms do. It's a yeah. big machine. Ours is not. Ours is yeah. how can we optimize the lifter's experience, Yeah, which is much different despite COVID. All right, maybe last question, kind of related to Kyle's stuff, but not. What's the greatest non-lifting physical feat? I mean, Kyle threw really fast, so it's kind of easy. <laughs> but you can think of a moment uh, if you like. I'm trying to think of like stuff that someone's done that nobody's ever done. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, but that no, I, I think they're talking about personal. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Hmm. oh okay. Yeah, personal. Non-lifting. Yeah, personal physical feet. feet. Physical feet. Which physical is just feet. funny because like obviously Kyle's new to the crew. If those don't know, he's he's his official title is El Jefe of Third Street Barbell. Uh, so he's running the show of the physical location. But he played professional baseball, so that's like easy for him. Um, I I played basketball at a higher level and longer level than i have lifting but all of you know me through lifting so like yeah. to me if you say like what are you most proud of like is i mean maybe some of the lifts or whatever but not really like i play basketball at a high level and i work my tits off to get there so like basketball my physical feats there are way beyond my like 700 pound deadlift it took me 10 years to deadlift 700 pounds like that's cool and hard mm-hmm. but it's not like that impressive some yeah. dudes are pulling 700 within their first year now in this yeah that's so it's insane so it's a little different and jim like jim is known on the internet for our lifting world hopefully because yeah. you guys like us but it's because of our lifting backgrounds trying to think physical feet i probably have mine They're like the most impressive i guess yeah. not what i'm proud of yeah um, but most impressive, like, I think I touched rim and the, what the hell is so funny? <laughs> I have a funny one. <laughs> <laughs> you should go there. Yeah, go 2008, ahead. 2009, North or Northern California. No putter cares. of the year. Putter of the year. <laughs> Sitting right here. That's baby. pretty good. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Not All bad. Right, dude. For individuals that's over 5'9", but under 5'11", <laughs> that are 21 <laughs> years old. Nice, dude. That's a, that's a that's mini sick. doctor disrespect title, yeah. dude. That's <laughs> yeah, not bad. Putter of the year is Back to good. back putter champ. I don't have anything like that. Like, seventh grade, I touched the rim, and in, by eighth grade, I was hanging on the rim. Which, like, when you look back at, like, some of the greatest dunkers, like, that's the same age they started doing things, and then I just obviously didn't grow. <laughs> You know, like everyone says, like Shaq dunked first in eighth grade. Like, fuck yeah, I'm about to be Shaq. Yeah, but for yeah, a seventh yeah. grader to hang on the rim or, or touch the rims, not bad considering I'm a five yeah, eight Italian kid. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I got do? nothing for this one, folks. I got nothing. Nothing I physical. I would like. Do you ever do any kind of like weird like a marathon? You ever go on a hunch fuck like that? No. Yeah, me neither. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I won't no. Do I, I, this is totally not impressive. But I survived. Uh, uh, being completely like losing my my dive partners in in uh, in uh, Lake Tahoe, 
I wasn't really in any danger. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I was totally fucking by myself. <laughs> what, where were you diving? I was, was uh, scuba diving. Oh, in Lake Tahoe? In Lake Tahoe. Oh, that sounds sick. I didn't know oh, people did that. Yeah, people do it. I, I, if you're trying to get the higher level of, of, of diving certification, yeah. you, you have to do some altitude Oh. Dives. Yeah. That's an altitude dive. Yeah. I felt like shit going in. There were supposed to be four of us, and there were, then there were only three. Yeah. And the other two guys just like, <laughs> they were gone. Suddenly, I turned around and they were gone. Oh, I had, shit. I had terrible buoyancy issues because it's it's fresh water. Sure. Not salt water. Yeah. Salt water, you get a little boost. Yeah, yeah. Fresh water, you don't. And Lake Tahoe kind of goes like this, like it's just like. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of a ledge, and then it's like straight down to hell. Is there and anything to see? Uh yeah, Th- well the thing is that it, it, when when it's when when you're not stirring shit up, it's very clear and you can see for a oh, long yeah. way. Mm-hmm. But there's not like coral and like no, cool no, there's turtles. rocks and there's fish and right. that's about it. Yeah, it's it's, it's a not lake. there's no yeah. not worth me dying. No, it's no. <laughs> scuba no. How, how deep how deep is it or how deep do you get when you're scuba diving? Oh, I don't think I was below probably forty five feet. Okay. I wasn't that deep, but I was like, when you're just like floating out there and there's yeah, nothing out. around you and you're having buoyancy uh-huh. problems. And part of the reason I quit diving was honestly because uh, something up with my sinuses and it's very difficult for me to equalize. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my nose bled after every time, no matter how much like you t- sometimes you take Sudafed or whatever to keep it from from. Um, from clamping down, but you're getting jacked up. <sighs> what is that doing? Like basically thinning your blood, basically a little bit. No, just it just it, op- it opens okay, the, okay. up your sinuses so that. Okay, uh, okay. Um, yeah, no, I my fa- my I mean I'm not used to water pressure like that, man. It feels like my head's gonna explode if I go yeah even eight feet. I'm like holy shit, my head. I mean I know you get used to it. That's what they say. You don't do it real. Stuff. You don't go down quick. That's the thing. Yeah, you don't, yeah I mean typically some slow. people do, but they're but they're, they're used freaks. To it. I thought yeah, it was gonna be the greatest fucking thing ever. I thought that this is gonna be so much fun. Like, I don't want to golf because I don't give a shit about golf. Yeah. <laughs> this would be really cool. You should golf with the and, putter of the year. And, then it's, and it's super <laughs> it's super expensive to, yeah, to yeah. dive. And, I like, yeah, it's like that is literally the most alone I've ever felt yeah, in my bet. entire life. I'll bet. So I survived that, but it's not really a big accomplishment. Yeah, none of that stuff's ever interested me, to be honest. Like oh, scuba yeah, diving or, like, nice. rock climbing. Yeah, yeah. Go to Hawaii and yeah. snorkel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty fucking cool. Yo, I got Shark Week on TV. Yeah. You ain't getting a better angle than that. I'd yeah. rather whale watch no, in it's Hawaii. It's cool to experience. I've done it. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it's not cool, but it's just not my di- gig. Yeah. yeah, I'll go on a boat. I'll go on a boat and look around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, then you get in the water. Bro, you, I ain't getting wait, in I was the in water. Kauai, man. You could whale watch just from the, the beach, man. You yeah, just sit like there that. and you just, order, yeah. you just get drinks. You're watching whales fly around. You're like, damn, this is... <laughs> Yeah. This is legit. Yeah, or a little that baby kind of hike, thing. a little baby hike to a fall, but I'm yeah, not trying yeah. to hike, hike, hike just no, to see I'm this not, thing. Yeah. I'm not going to schedule an appointment with the scuba diver instructor and go out in the water way out there. I don't know where I'm at, Yeah. and then we're just going to jump down and look around. Uh-uh, dude. I ain't, uh, yeah. You can find me in the hotel lobby. Know. It's just not me. I, I know a ton of people that are like that, a ton. My my biggest panic is the thought of, of uh, being in an underwater cave. Yeah. Diving or not, it's just like oh spelunking. My Sounds like the worst thing. Spelunking? Ever. Is it spurlunking? Spelunking. I think spelunking. I would. Spelunking. Spelunking. Yeah. I'm a spelunk, and I would do that. I'm more scared of an elevator than that. Really? Yeah. Those, spelunking. Those kids cool. in Thailand or wherever it was that got that got trapped in that oh, tunnel yeah. system. Oh yeah, that is my nightmare. Chile? Th- oh, that was a cave. No, yeah, no. This I think it was Thailand. Chile was a I think an underground and, and mined and elevator. For like my, weeks or months, right? Yeah, that's some sketchy shit. Yeah. My sister and her husband went, uh, they went, I guess it's r- cave diving ish. Yeah, spelunking. Yeah, but they're crawling through little crevices for yeah, hours. Yeah, spelunking. Their I heads did touching both sides of a wall, yeah. and it's p- pitch black. I just and they're turned. Just, they're, they're, just crawling, they're just crawling around. Yeah, we did I'm that like, in Hawaii. Uh, my cousin lived in Hawaii. No. Um, I'd pass out, I think. Shout out to An- out. Angela, my, my cousin, and she brought us on this sick hike. And I was a kid, though. When I was a kid, I was so tough. I would have done anything. Oh, yeah. I could have no seen fear. I could have seen a tiger, and I would have fought that thing when yeah. I was a kid. I was probably like 12. And not even like a kid. Like, I, I was a uh, you know, young adult. No, yeah, yeah. But I, we, d- we did that th- through up a, ri- a creek, up a creek, and then you're in mud, and you're climbing up a waterfall, and it's pitch black. You just have a little head thing. I loved yeah. it. I yeah. would never do that now. There's th- no chance in hell. I think the next main thing, I don't know why, I just thought of this. Um, for anyone who's a racer out there, or like looks at the, like racing and stuff like that, the Le Mans, like the race, the twenty four hour race, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would want to do that. But they call it the it's basically like a, they call it the lemon, like lemons. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, where that's they take to be fun as hell. Yeah, or you max out the price of like I think fifteen hundred dollars or a yeah, thousand yeah, yeah, on yeah. the car, but it's a twenty four hour 
race. You buy a and shitter. You, yeah, and you buy. I think it's like you and two other buddies or three other buddies, and you got to switch out every like four. And or that's five a road hours. race. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's no? a track. It's Le Mans. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you you just drive the track for twenty four hours straight, and apparently it's like some euphoric crazy thing. I, I watched yeah, yeah. the guys from Top Gear, James May and uh, Richard Hammond and uh, Jeremy Clarkson or whatever from uh, Top Gear. They did it, and like at the end, he was like crying. He was like, "I can't believe that. That was <laughs> awesome." He was like that. Like they were done. He was like crying. Like I've never felt this way before. I'll I was do like, it. Damn. That'd be sick. I think that'd be a lot of fun. What are we buying? A Japanese car? Uh, yeah, you could do whatever. They have local stuff too all the time. I mean, local as in yeah, you know, local to tracks. Yeah, we have a, we have a lot of stuff. We have actually have a number of tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah we do. Well, what is to be than, famous, uh, right? Monterey Bay. Uh, there's a. Uh, I don't know why I always forget that, but anyway. Yeah, it's the color of the uh, BMW. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> the color of the BMW. I can't think of the name, but there's a famous track here. Because and BMW name Sears blue. Point. Um, uh, because I went there. It's yeah, like a baby yeah. blue. It's like an aqua blue. Hmm. Chat. Anyway. Yeah, I know. We we, we got V Dub for life. He, he can help us out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I forget. But that would be awesome. That's Saguna? something I would want to do. So, so. Um. That that sounds. I guess. S- Are you saying the local one? It's local ish. He said it's there's nothing to do in Lamont. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, besides the race. <laughs> 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 I'm not going there. I mean, I don't know. I'd go there for the Saguna. race. Shout out to Paris though. Yeah, shout out. Saguna, right? Saguna. Uh, oh, Laguna Seca. Laguna, Laguna Seca. Seca. Laguna Seca. That's where he went. Yeah, I don't know why. I so that's a that. color. So that's a uh, BMW color. Laguna what is Seca is a BMW. Color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a oh, really like oh. nice blue. It's like a oh, really okay, okay. turquoisey blue. Yeah, it's like that's ocean, called ocean blue kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They I named like that it after the yeah, racetrack, yeah, yeah. obviously. But what's that? Mid centralish California, I think, right on the coast. I think it's central. It's on Monterey. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's where we went one time. We went there for uh, I forget what series it was, but yeah, the all, then, all the jacked up like BMWs, yeah, and that kind of yeah. stuff that are just. And then Infineon, that's near Connie. That's really famous, I think, or pretty famous. It's very famous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's usually famous. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I think that'd be fun. It wouldn't even have to be a 24-hour one. We could do one where it's like you just get the, the lemon car that's 500 bucks and you just do a little we race. We just vlog it. Yeah, yeah. How, you can, you how can, you far, can bump each other and stuff. How and close to New York City can we get on a $1,000 car? Okay, now we're talking something else. That's that's gonna, I'm talking racing. Kind of I'm, we're we're going to race. Re- they do those races too. Road, like what's the road, what's road the track. Yeah, what's the like 911 thing? And 911s are like made for it where they like, drive cross country. Yeah. There's like a name for that, but they do like a bunch of them. Oh yeah, you go to like the, Vegas, the gumball, to, yeah, gumball three thousand, gum, gumball, ra- gumball rallies, yeah, yeah. Gumball, gumball three thousand. Yeah, they're all like, like their cars are all illegal, and they get pulled yeah. over, and they just run from cops. <laughs> well, yeah, man, <laughs> that, that one. cannonball run. I love that shit, dude. Yeah, 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 they get pulled over every single state, every single time. Yeah, but even a legal one, they go to like Vegas to Nashville or something. I, no, I've, no, the race is legal. The cars are illegal. No, but even I know, but so, they, they do ones legally as well though, with the cars. I. Uh, I I don't think the car being illegal is part of the process of driving yeah, cross country. Yeah, but generally, the, if you're in California, they're all illegal, basically. Maybe, but yeah, I just yeah. know like 911s are made for that kind of deal. Like they're I've, made. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, I've seen, I've seen gumball rally yeah, vehicles yeah. Yeah. around. Like yeah. I've been, I was some point somewhere near the 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 race course. Because it's uh, a road race. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then there's some weird ass shit. I mean, all you have to do is Google it, and you can look at the crazy it's pictures. It's so sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Bryce is going to do that. Oh, yeah? Uh, oh, that'd be car. fun. Well, he's, he's getting his, uh, yeah, no, he's getting his R32 decked out with body kit and everything like that. He's not going to take that, but I think he's going to get a different car maybe and do it. I don't know. He, he'll do, he'll do something crazy. He should have took his uh, his R35, I think, would have been good. Dude, Connor, old school with the Bing.com. <laughs> Why is it up. on? I mean, I, it's just. There it is, dude. There they are. Like this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, those are the normal cars. There's, they're like, they're like theme cars too. Oh, like what's the? Um, Damn, it's been around for that long. Yeah, it's, an, it's, yeah. Oh, wow, that's awesome. What's the? Nice uh, yeah. What's the uh, cartoon from like there the '80s? Oh, yeah. Uh, I know you're talking about the race. <laughs> yeah, dude, I used to watch that every. Wacky Saturday. Racers. I used to watch racers. that every Saturday. Yeah, wacky like, racers. Who's gonna win, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> wacky Racers. <laughs> We could make our own wacky racers. That villain in it isn't uh, the villain have the dog. Yeah, the dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, d- that's good. Dastardly and um, mumbly. Yeah, I think is the damn. Yeah, good that's memory, that's dude. Connor's that, that's jewel actually, laugh. <laughs> and Weez is the same as that dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What's the dog's name? Dastardly. Yeah, uh, no, the, so. the guy. I think the. The driver's yeah, name. Okay, okay. I don't know. Fuck, They'd always I try to know. set up like. Uh, we're t- I'm, I'm talking about the 60s version. Not yeah, the, no, that's yeah, what we no, watched too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The frame by yeah, frame. Car- one. That's yeah, why yeah. I got Cartoon Network. They showed all that shit. 
Wacky Racer. 68 to 70. Racer, there we go. Dude. You got it. Oh, okay. Give I me, can't give believe me. Yeah. a cast list. So, that guy. Yep. Yeah. That's it right there. What was his name? Damn it. Why does I mean, I every right. villain, like in that era, they all have like uh, mustaches like that? Yeah, they yeah. all do. It's like they're That's a their sick eyes. logo. Dick yeah. Dastardly. Dick Connor. Dastardly? Connor. Connor, go back to that logo. There he is, dude. Dick Dastardly. Big DD. What a. Connor, go what back. I need a picture of that logo. What's the What's the dog's name? Uh, you, but you, you said oh, it. What, what was I it? think it's Mumbly. Mumbly? Mumbly. I'm not Mumbly. sure, though. Okay, I could be okay. completely wrong about this. And then scroll up. It's probably, right that's probably Dude, right. that thing's sick. That is actually pretty oh, that dope. Is really I actually sick. really like that. No, I love that. That's literally, that's Austin Powers style, dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep, uh, go, go down. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and then something like that? Uh, yeah. Muttley. 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 That's a great It's called The Mean Machine. That's There he is, dude. Yeah, he's dude, laughing. He's literally laughing. That's Connor. He's he's, <laughs> he's either laughing or he's 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 COVID covering his mouth. For Mutley something. is a good dog's name. I yeah. I think I think it's funny when they always have like a like a villain like that, but then his sidekick is like actually a good person. Yeah, he's like not like grumpy like, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like like the, they'll be like, oh, I don't know about this kind of <laughs> thing. Like it's like uh, the Grinch and and his dog. Exactly. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The dog's just the nicest thing in the world, and he's just like <laughs> that dog single handedly. Saved who? The Bill. Slag Brothers, rock and gravel slag. Look at the vehicles, Connor. Click on the vehicles right there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that one. Or all those, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. awesome. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> Some wacky racers. I didn't watch any of this. <laughs> you ne- you never seen this? <laughs> I've seen it. I just never watched it. Yeah, so I used to deprived. watch it like every... So that means they just re-aired it when I was, you know... Were you no, practicing sure. putting when yeah. it was on? That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I watched out. Twenty years later, this is what like yeah. Saturday cartoons were up until like, then they then they started making obviously newer stuff. Like but yeah. they showed like all this. Yeah, I feel it like was this cool. was in a movie. I don't remember which movie. Maybe, but. but yeah, Cartoon Network like started playing all this stuff. What's the other one like Banana Split Crew or something? The Banana Splits. Yeah, they th- that yeah. was that's uh, la la la, yeah. la 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 la. They tied him to a cactus. La, 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 yeah, la, they did all that on. on uh, you never heard of Banana Split? That no. fucking Hanna Barbera. It's actually kind of scary, right? Aren't they like monkeys running around in the beginning or something? It's kind of scary. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Never those. scared. Yeah, me. those got no. Those are kind of scary. That oh, guy yeah, is kind of yeah. scary. No, they a little are, bit. Yeah, yeah, that guy is scary, dude. dude He's there's some cool though. <laughs> the, some of that older stuff is really scary. <laughs> oh, that dude's holy scary. shit. That uh, guy's scary, dude. bro. <laughs> the 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 elephant is called Snork. Yeah, these are great I think. names. Damn, if you got that, Jim. I think that I'm. I think I'm right. You Just that a, monkey kind of. Jim scary. gets a hundred dollars if he gets. This guy's a stoner. But this whole show, <laughs> this whole show would just play. Am I right? Yeah, I I think you're right. Yeah. Well, I don't There's know what his name is, but Jim, the show would just play cartoons, though, right? Like it wasn't a real yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, it was bumpers. It was the bumpers logo, around Hanna Barbera stuff. The logo's very snorky. snorky. I feel like was Wacky Racers in this or no? Uh, they might have done a so collab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, 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 collab. No, no, the oh. whole thing. Yeah, look at the logo on the right. No, yeah. Banana Split would like do that intro song, and then they would play a cartoon, or like there's a kid, like an Aladdin type kid cartoon. Oh, I don't remember. And then they that. would go back, and they would do like a little skit, and then it would be another cartoon, and there'd be a skit, and there'd be a cartoon. That was the whole show. Damn. Well, uh, um, yeah, for sure they did that, and then uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle was a yeah. little bit the same. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. And then Rocky and Bullwinkle had Fractured Fairy Tales. Yeah, or Underdog. Underdog, underdog was They're like part of this yeah. thing. Yeah. How on earth did you get underdog? That's you're good, really right? not in the right demo for. for I'm telling underdog. you, Cartoon Network only played this yeah, when I played, first got. Yeah, it. Yeah, when yeah, I first got Cartoon old. Network, it wasn't like now. It's like Family Guy and like it was this. It was uh, no, it was old stuff. I don't even know I what else. It, yeah. I think it was just that. All the yeah, it was all like Bugs Bunny and stuff like that. I'm pretty yeah. sure on Cartoon yeah. Network. Right? Yeah, and then and then I remember when I turned like 10, 11, maybe late nineties. Then it made a switch and got like more edgy. Yeah. and started to. I don't even know what we watched. Uh, what's the cats one? It was all seventies. It was uh, Josie and the Pussycats. Mm-hmm. No, it was uh, the uh, the. It might have been a little newer. It was two cats. It was fucking sick. They were uh, j- uh, fighter jet pilots. Thundercats. Oh. Was it Thundercats? I don't one know. was kind of thick so. though. I think it was maybe a remake, or maybe it was Thundercats. Possibly. Let's see it, Connie. I don't know. It might have been Thundercats. That's all Cartoon Network was, and then and then yeah, they remixed and and went into uh, yeah. what's their new stuff like Ren and Stimpy or is that Nickelodeon? But then Brennan it, and Stimpy's coming back. I heard all that stuff. Fresh Prince is making a new TV uh, show. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's a drama. No, though. no. Uh, and and Will Smith's involved. Try Thundercats, Connor. It Thundercats wasn't Thundercats. Dude, oh, no, do Thundercats, Thundercats cartoon. The, uh, it's definitely a cartoon. That's a no, superhero though is. thing. Thundercats is a. Uh, oh no! But that oh, was no. also there. Uh, do like uh, Thundercats. Cartoon dude. Cat Jet Fighter. Thundercats logo is dope. No, they're cool. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was that on one. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Better been reused. I feel like everybody stole that logo. Yeah, yeah. They really did. Um, nah. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Don't Th- know. This guy, this guy. Eh, that guy. Is that SWAT it? cats. SWAT I'd cats. I never saw that. I don't know what that was, but that was sick. What the hell? Well, that was sick. What the hell? I don't know what that is. Dude, they were know, sick, dude. bro. They did like some Fast and Furious shit, but in an airplane. They were sick. Look at those guys. They're so cool. No, that guy sucks. I haven't watched it yet, but there's a brand new like uh, Star Trek cartoon from. Uh, it looks good. Rick and Morty. It looks really good. People. And it's half comedic, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's funny. I've been, I've been, I listened to a podcast that reviews <sighs> old Star Trek content and new Star Trek content, and they watched like four episodes of the of the animated series that f- followed years after the original Star Trek. Yeah. And like the first episode is dark as fuck. Really? <laughs> like maybe they didn't make this for little kids. Yeah. There's no like. Yeah. Well, I mean, this next one's probably going to be maybe not like dark. A, but a moral wrap up like uh, uh, South Park. Yeah, know? yeah. I was going to say I think maybe we this... all learned a very important lesson today. Yeah, I think this new one's probably going to be semi adulty too. Rick and Morty's the good. Shark. Uh, street Street Sharks. Street, street Sharks. sharks. That's like no, no. That's I mean, cool. that was Cartoon Network and stuff, but that was like the revamp. That's the edgy revamp of them copying Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Oh, there's a. Oh, my God. Who's making a new. Uh, Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen yeah, making stoked. a new uh, watch Ninja this. Turtles. Yeah, I'm stoked. Yeah, I watched this too. I did like this. Yeah, yeah. They're all jacked. Yeah. I watched the. Ah! Uh, was that a movie? I don't know. That yeah, looks pretty know. real. Not real, but you know what I mean. No, that's yeah. fake. Yeah. I watched a ton that's of them. Looney that's Tunes. Them. I watched a ton of Looney yeah, Tunes growing up. A ton. Yeah. Like, that's all I watched. I watched all this. It was just on all the time. I'd wake up and be like, all right, we're watching this. It was great. Yeah. And it would be, yeah, Roadrunner was one of my faves. Um, yeah. Damn. There's a lot of good ones. Yeah. Beep. Missed it. But yeah. Now Cartoon Network, all you do is get fucking Family Guy on repeat. Yeah. yeah. Trash That's shows, literally dude. all it is. All right. We're, I think we've devolved into cartoon <laughs> nostalgia. We'll, we'll do a whole another one. A whole nostalgia day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, we have uh, there's a fair amount of a fair amount of it in here at the moment. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to decorate my desk at the gym. I've never like done that. Oh yeah, like done cool shit that like inspires me or whatever. I was already shopping. There's gonna be like a basketball and like a barbell. Yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you just described every inch of me. Mm. Uh, probably more than one basketball. More, Bas- two, just two, two basketball. Two basketball. Actually, a lot of sure? different that's, representations of barbell. That's actually pretty crazy. I'm gonna make our own basketball, and I'm not giving all three of you one. You don't get one. <laughs> I'll just hit up our guy. Who's our guy? Um, yeah, I have our guy. You don't have our guy. I'm gonna hit up our guy. <laughs> yeah, and he's gonna we, reject we have our, call. We have our. No, he will not. You he don't loves have a guy, me, dude. Big M. That's what we'll call him. <laughs> Big M. Big I think one. we should yeah, yeah, bring good. this one in for a landing. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Twitch, thanks for tuning in. iTunes, Spotify, everyone, love you. Uh, new episode every Wednesday. Give us a rating and review. It really, really does help. Please share this thing on Instagram and Twitter. I will repost. I'll show you all the love. I'm Solomon Mike Instagram. Whatever or else you want to follow me and 3sb.co if you want exclusive will try to remember it's our first launch give us a break but we will give you first chance to grab the apparel before it sells out um, everything we're doing is pretty limited um, by design it's not like the quantities are okay but w- once this design's made I'm never going to make this design again so 3sb.co if you want first grabbies on what we're offering and gym info Plug away, dude. We need Plug to get away. Kyle ten thousand ah, followers. That too. We need a. Uh, I need to change my name too. But everyone has something Hefe. I looked up El Hefe. Everything It's yeah, pretty much taken stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just Kyle Castro with two O's. Kyle dot Castro with two O's on Instagram. It's basically all I have right now. But yeah, hopefully we will get me to ten K one day. Who knows? And then Connor too. Connor's empty Instagram is at Connor O'Neill. On TikTok, oh. at Augusta Films, uh, while it's still alive. While it's still alive. Oh my God! Not taking and talking. I am at the Jim McD on all the social medias. I would like to ask you to hang on right now, through the end of the show, and listen to the trailer for Lane Norton's new podcast that I am doing post production on, sort of, sort of executively producing, sort of kind of, not really, but yes. Um, which is really fun. Uh, it's been a fun show to uh, work on with uh, Lane and his wife, Holly. And uh, you can find this this podcast on Instagram, 50% Facts, where percent is a word and 50 is just numbers. And you can uh, find the website in that same place. And we'll talk to you next week.